Kia Aurora, guys. Read of the Kiwi here. And it's finally patch 6.1, which means new main scenario quests and a bunch of other goodies like reworked PvP, new alliance raid. Oh, so excited. So, tonight's stream, we're going to be jumping into, uh, well, tonight's stream, today's stream, because I'm streaming early. <laughs> But uh, we're going to be jumping into the main scenario, um, the newfound adventure. I'm so excited for what what to come next. Um, I've already had a quick go at PvP and whatnot. Um, that seems fun, so I definitely will be jumping into that in future streams. But today is all about the MSQ. And uh, yeah, so let's jump back into it. Hello, Tataru. Oh. Eru, how lovely to see you. If you're not in too much of a rush, I was about to make a pot of tea. Would you like a cup? I have some tea right here. Take a seat, and I'll find us something to nibble on as well. Mmm. Lots of nice sweets. It's so much quieter these days without everyone around. Not that I'm pining for your return, you understand. I have my sources, and I know that each and every one of you is doing well and keeping busy with your endeavors. <sighs> Meanwhile, I'm left with a surplus of free time and the question of how to make the most of it. What about you? Any plans for the immediate future? Uh... A brand new adventure, of course. <laughs> Traveling to the edge of existence and back wasn't enough? Well, if that's the case, I might have a suggestion for you. You've fought bravely and selflessly, helping those in need and saving our star from unimaginable threats. For your deeds, you've been hailed as the champion of Eorzea and a host of other incredible things. But why not put those titles aside for a while? Acquit yourself as a simple adventurer again and travel the world in search of wonder. Hmm. Who knows what mysteries are still waiting to be discovered. Oh, that's the spirit. I can feel from here the blazing fire that just lit in your belly. Now, all you need is a destination. If you're having trouble deciding, just leave it to me. Savner, that's where you should go next. I've already been there. But yeah, okay. I doubt you were able to squeeze in a proper tour of Rads at Han the last time you were there. What with the burning skies and rampaging monsters and so forth, and I'm sure Vritra would be pleased to see you. Hmm. Then there's the bounty itself. The Empire's presence in the region was always a deterrent to exploration. So if you've a mind to sail that sea, now's your chance. 
Just think of all the new experiences you could have. Hmm. Okay. Tell me, have you been to the ruins beneath the waters of the Bounty? As the bearer of Azem's crystal, you may consider your duty to see at least that much. <laughs> Them spoiling future content coming back. <laughs> oh, I know that look. That's an adventurer ready to take on the world. In anticipation of an occasion like this, I was planning to gift you a new set of traveling clothes, but it's uh, still a work in progress. Shouldn't take much longer now, though, so sit tight and I'll have the last few bits sewn up before you can finish another cup of tea. I, I appreciate it. Probably not gonna wear it, at least not on this class. But I always like new glam options. You're the best at it. Oh, make sure it has pockets. Oh, I probably should have said make sure it has pockets. <laughs> I certainly don't have pocket sets at the moment with my car. <laughs> yeah. Stitch in here and trim in there. Not the threads with l Yeah. Just a little more to go. I'm sure you're still brimming with excitement. I'm a uh, next Omni crop. I am one crafter. with the needle. See how the fabric surrenders to my whims. So I'll be judging the quality. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll make sure the lining has plenty of pockets for all your little treasures. I swear adventurers are worse than children when it comes to hoarding every feather <laughs> and leaf and animal hide they come across. Oh, we mustn't forget the waterproofing. Gods forbid you forget to disrobe before plunging into the sea, or a river, or a piping hot bath. <laughs> the fourth wall breaking is great. <laughs> uh... Ooh. Ooh. What's this? That's like... That's a reap... Reaper stuff. Reaper stuff, and it's like made me think Xenos, but he was left on the edge to die. So it'd be weird. I, I feel like I'd give a disservice to the whole final Xenos fight if that is him. So I hope it's not. I hope it's someone else. As much as I like Xenos. Apologies, I do get a little carried away with my sewing. Ah, this tune, I love it. You seem awfully cheerful. Pleasant dream? Or are you just looking forward to the next chapter of your grand saga? Either way, I promise to provide you with new apparel, and so I shall. If 
if you'll accompany me to the Diamond Forge, we can put the finishing touches on your outfit. Shall we? All right. Quest accepted. No napping this time. I only need a moment. You'll see. Oh, enjoy my naps. Little more room in the shoulders. Open up the cuffs. A final adjustment to the hem. All done. Let's see how it looks on the mannequin. Hey. Well, what do you think? Doesn't it scream ready for a bold new adventure? Hmm. Definitely does. I'm so glad you approve. About done yourself, Tartaru. Thank you. Oh, stop. You're making me blush. If you really want to thank me, though, all I ask is that you wear this on your travels. <laughs> Or at least anywhere lots of adventurers might gather. Heh <laughs> heh. Showing off glams. They'll look at you, a famous hero, and wonder what whatever did she purchase wherever did she purchase those stylish yet practical garments. And before you know it, hordes of new customers will be climbing over each other to place an order at Tataru's Tataru Ta Taru's bouquet. I can fe hear it now, the merry clink clink of gill overflowing my cough the sweet music to my ears. Yay. Ah, oh, so there's no chance for it. I sadly probably won't really be using, wearing it all that much. Unless I can find some good glam to go with it. Ahem. Burgeoning em uh, merchant empires aside, you must be excited to start a fresh chapter of your of your life. New places to go, new people to meet. I often wonder how you remember all your experience and exploits without taking at least a few notes. Oh, maybe you should should start doing just that. You never know when some odd de past detail might become relevant, or if one day you'll take a blow to the. <laughs> To the head and forget the better part of the past decade. <laughs> what the heck? Something to keep in mind in any case. The unending codex. Final days, science of Sims Dawn. After it. Oh. New entries. Law stuff. Yeah, it's very, uh, usual fantasy. <laughs> um. That necklace could be a good placeholder for when I do actually want something around the neck. Other than that, uh, I don't really have any ideas for glams yet, all of that. 
As the uh, former receptionist and sometimes intelligence gatherer of the science, allow me to offer you a word of advice. Do not expect juicy rumours to simply fall into your lap. Adventurers rely on gossip, and the best places to pick up information are taverns and markets. At present, you only have a broad destination in mind. When you arrive in Thavnir, I suggest you explore your options at Mihaid's Mihain, the finest drinking establishment at Rans at Han. Tell them the employees, and they'll not only point you in the direction of the local tellers, but also share you with the tricks of for share you with the tricks for loosening their tongues. Now, I really must get a be getting back to running my boutique. Enjoy the journey, Teru, and may fortune find you. Bye. Alright. Rods at Han. Welcome to me hides the hand. Oh, hello. I did not recognize you at first. Are you here alone? Let me find you a table. Ruins beneath the bounty. Would you be speaking of the sunken treasure vault? We have one regular, a historian, in fact, who could tell you all about it. Ah, there he is, Professor Jolene. I thought I saw him come in. Though a somewhat private sort, the Professor is quick to befriend those who share his fondness for Mihain's unique beverages. Offer him any drink from our selection and he would happily share everything he knows about the vault you seek. And a few other bits besides. Whatever you buy for him is on the house, by the way. If me, Mirai'd find out I took coin from Thavsnir's Xavier, he would have me scrubbing pots for a week. Week. Free drinks. Yes. Following events cannot be skipped. You may wish to cancel any pending duty route. That's fine. Got none. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. For you, my boys, friend. Oh, just a friendly chat. How about a drink? Well, I certainly wouldn't say no to a drink freely offered. <laughs> Here we are, one of Mihai's finest. Enjoy. Oh, ah, lovely. Bottoms up. I don't think I'm going to be able to hold. Dahi empties the cup in a single pool. That was very kind of you, miss. But I know when I'm being softened up. What is it you want from me? Oh-ho. Uh -oh. Chasing down that old tale, are you? It does seem to appeal to the adventurous at heart. Now, when to begin? Might I assume you've heard of Al-Zadar? He was... He was Khan of the Aru, Aru tribe, which sailed to Thavnir from the mainland, and key figure in the history of Razat Han. Mm. He, 
his decision to aid the Akas Akasodara is what ultimately won them the war against the Gasuri, thus allowing our predecessors to lay the foundation for the thriving city-state. The truly fascinating stories, however, concern his grandson, Al Alzadar III, who was known for his deeds as Satrap at Radzat Han's early days, earlier days. Some attest that this man traveled to another world entirely and returned with with glittering riches, others that he uh, bro brokered an alliance with a certain worm of the first blood. Then there is the tale of the sunken vault, the one you seem most curious about. According to this legend, Alazadar the third claimed a small island somewhere in the middle of the bounty. There he built a structure reaching clear to the bottom of the sea, a deep secret storehouse, and locked all his worldly wealth within. In the centuries since, whenever a natural disaster or hardship befell Radzat Han, folk would remember the tale of hidden treasure. Hardy souls would set out to claim their fortune, but precious few ever made it home. Would you like to hear more? Cough. I apologize. I have a slight tickle and oh my cup appears to be empty. Another round! <laughs> ah, I see we've reached an understanding. You're a sharp one, adventurer. Another for the professor. Oh ho ho ho, today was a splendid day to visit me hang. Goats down his news. Drink with gusto. Where were we? Ah, hick, yes. Those who did return from seeking the treasure vault ref refused, I, I mean, flatly refused to speak of what they saw. Did this discover discourage others? Nay, quite the opposite. Such accounts only serve to feed the legend and the golden lure grew stronger than ever before. That reminds me of something Aza, Azama was saying. Azama's fellow concierge of Spiritus Potables. Yes, yes he is. Anyway, he was saying that one of his acquaintance <laughs> acquaintances went after the treasure himself. Hasn't been seen since he set sail, I hear. But he did have, uh, no, I can say no more. You seem a generous sort. What kind of man would I be encouraging what is clearly a foolhardly quest? In my words, if my words sent you to your death, I could never live with myself. I am no stranger to peril. Is that so? Perhaps it's your turn to tell a tale then. What man of dangers have you have you face? <laughs> Fair despair itself. The very edge of existence? From anyone else I'd struggle to believe it. But I recognize you now. You're the hick hero of the final days. A drink. I need another drink to settle my nerves. Miel, more of the same if you please. As you wish. But this one is on your coin, Professor. Oh. Anyway, you being who you are, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to share a little more. This friend of Azahan, Azamaz, he was desperate to buy a treasure map, one which showed the way to the entrance of the of the vault. Seems he could only get it from some merchant what's his name but i forgot forget let's drink a toast to you my new best friend meow more drinks signal for water instead hmm <laughs> 
Drinks here. Oh, another sign of heart. Ah, that was that that was water. Did you bring me water? Still, that's that's probably for the best. Very kind of you, really. My head will certainly thank you in the morning. Ah, uh, I seem to have overindulged. I am put in the minor words of Master D Rosan. Be wary of how much you drink, you swallow, lest it swallow you. <laughs> Forgive me, I am subject <laughs> you to no more of this unseemly, ahem, unseemly antics. If you wish to speak with Azahim, Az, Azama, well, as I said, we share a taste for Mehan's finer spirits. He probably came in as we were talking. I wish you fortune in finding your fortune. <laughs> that was great. Oh, look, there he is. Yes, I am Azama. Who might you be? Ah, all true, I'm afraid. My friend took a ship out in search of Alazadar's legacy. And I've been watching for his sails ever since. I tried to dissuade him, of course, but he refused to listen. All he could talk about was finding that vault and that look in his eyes. I knew it wasn't common gold or jewels he lusted after. He was hunting Alzdar's third's otherworldly hoard and his ambition would not be denied. I see it in you too, that appetite for mysterious and uh, known. But I'll not attempt to turn you from your path. I know too well the futility of that endeavor. So I will tell you what my friend told me. How he convinced a merchant in the bazaar to give him a rough location of the vault's entrance. It seems this merchant, one Zashal, I believe, is selling a map which shows the exact route, but my friend's purse was too light for its exorbitant price. With what meager wealth he had, he instead paid to learn that there are ruins on a small island somewhere in the bounty, and within those ruins hides the path to the vault deep below. If you truly intend on seeking Al Zadar's treasure, I suggest you put your affairs in order. I wish things were different, but I do not believe my friend is ever coming home. Poor dude. What's all this about? What's all this about? My mother and father were slaughtered by monsters. My baby sister still too young to fend for herself. Can you spare us no kindness? So, you hope to find your fortune? And what? You expect me to surrender my wares for pity's sake? <laughs> what have you to offer in payment? He's a merchant. What do you expect? As I it? thought, come back when you've more than rags to your name. This is no mere treasure map. It is a guide to the vaults of Arzadal the Third, one of the great star tracks of Radzat Han, and a direct descendant of Alzadal Khan. It sounds. That's probably a fake, though. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, if someone had a map like that, it would take more a care. A map to legacy. So he says. A fake I'd wager. Yeah. Yes, same. This is no fake. The parchment is marked with an arcane glyph of passage. 
You may find the ruins hidden in the bounty, but you won't be setting foot inside without this in your possession. A priceless artifact it is, discovered amongst the rubble in the aftermath of the final days, and lovingly restored by yours tr This map is the key to fabulous riches, but I'll be the king of fools to simply give it away. Be glad I am no such king boy. Your scrawny eye did never return with that treasure alive. <laughs> Why must you tempt me with wealth I am powerless to claim? It's... How I shall envy the one who purchases that precious map. Whatever they pay will be but pittance against the golden hordes they stand to I, 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 th I think this kid is acting on behalf of the merchant to try and get someone to buy it and... Because that seems way over the top. What of you, sir? Fighting man of your stature would surely relish the challenge of recovering Alzadal's lost fortune. A fortune, you say? Oh, yeah, that... It's... If I had but the strength to seize that treasure, my starving son oh, God. would never want for this is, this is all... This is all a ploy. <laughs> it's all a trick, because this Dillian is a sucker <laughs> for merchants, and he's gonna go up and buy the map. And the guy picked his mark. I'll take it. Will this cover the price? Oh. Fucking fool. Well met, my friend. <laughs> Someone is dressed for adventure. <laughs> this is my normal garb. But yeah. Why Favner of all places? Knowing you, I suspect there's more to your plans than sightseeing and shopping. Ruins beneath the bounty? Curious. And here I've acquired a map to just such a site. With that sale, I do believe I've earned the rest of the day off. Thank you for your patronage, sir, but if you'll excuse me. You needn't mind us. And now I'll fleece one of the heroes of the final days. Pray the sisters were looking elsewhere. Oh. So that kid wasn't in on it. This map may or may not be genuine. Either way, we'll need a ship to find out for sure. I never took you for a treasure hunter. Lest you misunderstand, I seek the treasure not for myself. If such a fortune truly exists, then it could help ease the struggles of those who lost their loved ones in the final days. Ah, oh, good guy, Stinian. I hope to do for Thavnir what you and Alphano did for the Alamegans when you recovered the Mad King's trove. Come now. You know Alphano needs little encouragement when it comes to recounting the tales of your shared exploits.
Hmm. Speaking of precocious lads, that boy in the bazaar was clearly an accomplice of the merchant. Suppose his role yeah. was to draw the attention of the crowd and add weight to the merchant's bold claims. Yeah. Transparent act for the most part. It was not all mummery. The need to provide for his sister rang true enough. Thus, if some portion of the profits end up in that waif's pockets, then I will consider it money well spent. Whether the map leads us to the vault or not. Okay. There wasn't as big a sucker. You are coming along, yes? Actually. I thought as much. Yeah. Now, let's see about securing Going on an adventure a with my buddy Estinian. Like, if I did wear the um, garb that Tartarum made, that would have uh, that would have worked a lot better. Would have suited this match just in a lot better. <laughs> oh well. Stunning has been added to the unending codex. You recall you will recall I spoke of visiting Savna at Victor's request. Well, he finally invited me to a feast. And made his proposal once I was too full of harness the lights that refuse. He wishes me to train the radiant hosts in lance work. But that is a tale for another time. What we seen what we need now is a merchant or trawler with a ship for the open seas. Maitsia is a fisherman by trade, yes? We should head to Akial Akiala. Akiali and see if he can help us. Oh, before I leave, I actually think my retainer's stuff should be done. Yeah. That's, uh... Okay, uh... Proper gear. Oh, but it did put this up. Now we can go. Up 
My friends, what brings you to our humble village? So you need a seaworthy vessel to seek the, these ruins? Considering it was your deeds which allow us to return to fishing, I would be glad for the chance to replace we pay the favor. Wait here, and I'll have a boat uh, stoked and ready for you in no time. Wow, he's traveled far. Have you noticed our little shadow? He's been following us since we left the city. We see you there, boy. Show yourself. Ah, it is you. Do you know how far out of our way we walk so you you'd not cross paths with some wild beast? I'm sorry, sir. But aren't you the heroes who saved Thavna? You are, I know you are. And I've gone and cheered you. I work with Zashal. You see, the map merchant. It's my job to play the pleading orphan. Convince the crowd his wares are worth the price he asks. I'm ashamed of what I've done and beg for your forgiveness. If not for you and my sister, I would never have... Well, we'll, we'll be... Enough. I knew your game and I paid the price willingly. A fortune purchase, as it turns out. For my friend here was seeking those very ruins. You are kind to overlook the wrong I have done you. But there is more you need to know. The map you brought is very real, as the, is the island it shows. I overheard Zashal selling that information to another customer. He told that man where he needed to search, about the ruins, about the vault, about everything. Then the man sailed out to find his fortune, never to return. You cannot go alone to that place. You should have m more friends with you, maybe even a whole army. I do not doubt the ruins hold danger, but I assure you, between the two of us, there is little we cannot overcome. Please, I cannot bear the thought of... of... We could invite comrades. We might... Need a hand with treasure. Now <laughs> you've gone and made him cry. <laughs> Good invite, comrades. That we could, assuming we do find the treasure hoard, it may prove wise to have more hands along for carrying. Any ideas? Any ideas? Whom we approach? The science has scattered far and wide since our last gathering. Oh. The people I want most are split between all the options. Um, Alphano and Alice are uh, at Galamal. They're pretty far. I don't remember where Sanford and Arianja went. Graha, Te, uh, and Krill are busy um, rebuilding the, uh, that segment in Old Shalian. Although I would like Graha. Nishtola. That's not doing this. Well, they could. 
probably them is probably the best option. Like, I, Crumb, may have her hands full rebuilding the students, but if you reach out to Graha, he would surely leap at the invitation. Yeah, he would. Cause I, pr I promised him, so I had to, had to mention that. Yeah, yes, that man is as strong as you. Is he though strong? I mean. Yeah, he, he saved everyone in the tower. That's all I need to say to convince the boy. What is your name, boy? Miraj, sir. Well, Miraj, your life is yours to live as you will. But I suggest you find a more honest trade if you wish to keep your sister safe. I'm not proud of what I do, but what choice do I have? We need to eat, and everyone's too busy rebuilding their own lives to bother with two grubby orphans. Wait, boy. I don't. I didn't take this roundabout road just to see you end up in some creature's belly. Let me walk you back to the city gates. Thank you, sir. Call me Estenine. Estenine. Estenian. God. <laughs> I've been watching too many too much Alanino content. <laughs> I just gave myself away with <laughs> what other dreams I watch. Um. <clears throat> All right, uh... <laughs> I shall leave you to recruit Graha. He'll appreciate the invitation that much more, I'm sure. As I recall, he was based at the Annex. Someone there ought to be able to point you in the right direction. Let us be off to Mirad. Do me a favor and don't stray from the path. I wonder what happens if you select the other options. I wonder if it is better that you end up inviting Graha, or if you do end up with different people. It's like, I had to select that option because Graha's my boy, our boy, and we promised promise at the end of Endwalker that we'd go on a brand new adventure together. Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, look who it is. Welcome back, Teru. What might the students do for you? Graha, yes, he's in the main hall with Mistress Crail. They've been holed up in there for days. By all means, go and give them an excuse to take a break. Yay! <laughs> Gotta be. Ah. <sighs> Urjika, my good man. <laughs> Would you be so kind as to... <laughs> oh, isn't this a pleasant surprise? I wish you had sent word ahead. I thought I was having visions for a moment there. Now there's a restoration of the students coming along. Slow and steady, Raha and I have been compiling old records of the students' activities. We located several accounts in the archives of Numenon and added them to the collection we recovered from the Isle of Val. And judging by the progress we've made thus far, sorting this pile will keep us occupied for days to come. Oh. But what brings you to the Annex, my friend? Surely you haven't come all this way just to watch us shuffle dusty papers around? I was hoping I could entice you to an adventure. <laughs> the treasure vault of Alzadar III. And you're looking for companions to join you on this expedition. 
I would dearly love to accompany you, of course. But I'm afraid I'm committed to another task. On the subject of which, I had hoped to ask for your assistance. <laughs> then again, it's not so urgent that it can't wait until you've returned. You should go, Raha. <laughs> I'll stay here and mind the shop, as it were. <laughs> Are you sure? I'd hate to leave That's you short-handed. Short -handed. <laughs> I'm sure. Just try to be back before too many moons have passed. Well, I guess we're off on another adventure already. <laughs> yeah. Have you asked anyone else to come along? Then might I suggest we invite your stola? Okay, I get. I guess. I guess you go around all the people. Uh, Ever since regardless the of your juice. She spent most of her time cloistered within the great Google library, hoping to piece together a method to traverse the rift. It would seem, however, that whatever wisdom she sought there was not to be found. She arrived in Charlian the other day. We spoke briefly before she began her search of Numenor. Considering what you've told us of Alzadal's extraordinary feats, I do believe your Stola would be more than interested to hear what you have to say. Yeah, it probably takes you around so you get the right people. Splendid! Then let us head to the archives at once. Wait, before you go. I have another potential member to volunteer. Yeah. If you room to spare. Yeah. Uriange. Yeah, it, it definitely. He sent the students a request for materials, you see. Treatises on the architecture of treasure vaults and the like. From what I can gather, the Loperitz are looking to make improvements to their own creation and wish to learn more about how we build things down here. So, why not take Urianger with you? Let him study Alzadal's legacy firsthand. None can deny the benefit of seeing something with your own eyes. If our expedition leader has no objections, I say we extend Urianger an invitation once we've spoken with your Stola. Yep, it's definitely set up so that no matter who you select, you go through Safe the correct travels, people. You two, but don't forget. I'd still like your help with that other and matter I mentioned. If we don't then go to Alpha No and Alice, that makes me kind of wish I selected Alpha No and Alice right. first. Then it's off to the library. <laughs> so we might we might just go there anyway. Who knows? Sleep with all these books. <laughs> That's great. I've never known you stole to doze off in the middle of research before. It's 
this. Take a nap. Oh, oh right, cast three cats. Mm. Close my eyes for one moment. I want to fall asleep. I must have been studying for two, three days straight before exhaustion finally claimed me. As you know, I've been researching ways to travel from the source to one of its reflections. Well, looking for hints, at least. I don't expect to find a simple set of instructions tucked away in some dark corner of the library. So I've been skimming through the stacks, hoping to uncover even a partial mention of any similar feats in the past. A means to travel between worlds exists, and you can be sure I will find a way to employ it. So I promised Runa, but twould seem I've set myself a nigh impossible task. You needn't be so hard on yourself. The leap I made with the Crystal Tower was not achieved in an afternoon. It was the culmination of a collective effort spanning generations. Mm. Oh, you think me discouraged? I assure you, tis quite the opposite. A daunting challenge and the time to sink my teeth into it. I feel like a fresh-faced student again. A scholar in her element. Indeed. Was there something else you wished to ask of me? Zadal is no minor figure in Harnish history, and much is known about his family. But this is the first I've heard of a descendant surviving a trip to another world. Mm. If those tales are true, then he may have left behind some clue as to how it was accomplished. An invitation to delve into one of the world's lingering mysteries. As if I could refuse. And whence do we embark upon this expedition? Akiali, by ship. But before that, we thought to extend an invitation to Urianje as well. He was in Thaumazane, last we heard. Then by all means, let us recruit him and be on our way. Oh, it looks like we're not going to be... Oh, we might still go see LSA Alpha No. Here's hoping.
I could have gone on my mount. <laughs> Probably should have. Would have been so much faster. <laughs> ah, our illustrious champion. Cloaked in the mantle of the common explorer, fame set aside in thy pursuit of simple adventure. I am told a new expedition is in the offing. It's good to see you well. And thee. As ever, thou art the picture of strength. You've been keeping yourself busy, I trust? True to our plan, Thancred and I embarked upon a pilgrimage of sorts, with an eye for gauging the state of those lands through which we passed. Our travels were interrupted, however, by a request for aid from our beferred lunar allies. As you may recall, the Loperids had been seeking new purpose for the moon, Another mm -hmm. role through which it might serve to benefit mankind. The Forum hath been working to advise them in this endeavor, but I return to offer mine own counsel. And this has what to do with treasure vaults, exactly? Ah, you have learned of my predicament from Mistress Cryo. I know not whence they acquired such knowledge, but the Loperits now stand convinced that adventurers delight in treasure hunts. Well, yeah. Thus, with their newly built wonderland of riches and mystery, do they hope to entice all manner of daring delvers to the moon. <laughs> so earnest and innocent was their desire to bring joy to the world that I found myself powerless to refuse them my cooperation. That's great. <laughs> they just want to build dungeons for us. <laughs> but what of you, my friends? Why are you come to Labyrinthos? Fascinating. This is indeed a most fortuitous opportunity. I should be honored to accept thine invitation. How long has it been, I wonder, when last our actions were not impelled by fate or desperation? Though I cherish the Scion's accomplishments, it is pleasant to not have the weight of the world upon our shoulders for a chain. Counting Istinian, we number five now, yes? Without knowing what traps or perils await on wary feet, we may be wise to refrain from recruiting others. Oh. Okay. So I don't get to go speak to Alice and Alpha, no. That's sad. Or Thancred. I agree. Between us, we should have the skills to handle whatever situation may arise. Shall we be on our way? What, no time to spare a word for the grizzled old bard? Hey, thank Red. I do at least get All to see well, him. I trust. A wasted trip, I'm afraid. I'd hoped to catch up with a former mentor while you parleyed with the rabbits. But it seems our paths were not to cross. You're looking well. Uh, 
That's because we didn't travel by experimental etherite. It's astounding what a lack of nausea does for one's sense of well-being. In any case, as we made our way around Ilzabad, we saw that much of the continent was in various stages of chaos. A certain amount of disorder is to be expected. The final days are over, and the people no longer have a common threat binding them together. Mm. That's the thing with these fledgling troubles, eh? You need to keep an eye out, lest they mature into full-grown headaches. So, for what reason have so many esteemed personages seem fit to get? Beneath the waters of the bounty, you say? I see you've already stolen away my traveling partner with the promise of unexplored ruins and scholarly glory. Nay, it is not for mine own indulgence, but rather the <laughs> fulfillment of my commitment to the Lopperets. Sure it is. Uh, of course. And if you have a Stinian rounding out your group, you'll likely have all the members you need. Feeling left out? I could put in a good word for you, if you like. <laughs> we may have been released from our obligations, but I'll never be free of that merciless wit of yours, will I? In all seriousness, it is best I sit this one out. Too many former scions consorting with one another might be seen as a cause for concern in certain quarters. I'll return to my usual reconnaissance and scout out the situation in the Far East. Feel free to share if you come across any interesting revelations. We don't get to see Alice or Alphano. Till we meet That's again. That's so sad. Shall we also hasten our departure? Sir Estinian will wonder what hath become of us. I got to see all of them. <laughs> Alpha no and Alpha, that's... Oh. That's big, feels bad for them. I send you to root Graha and you return with an entire survey party. I hope Matsuya's boat is steady enough to carry us all. What he means is we are grateful for the use of flying your precious fishing vessels. We are more than glad for the chance to provide it. I ask only that you take care to steer clear of the reefs and the shallows. I will keep an eye out. I don't really need food, so I'll just take the coin. As a Dar's legacy. <laughs> Al Zadar the third. I confess I am somewhat embarrassed that the tale of his journey to another world escaped my notice. Could it be more than simple folklore? What of the treasure he supposedly brought back? This undersea vault may hold relics from another reflection. My friends, we should temper our expectations. The map doth promise ruins, but beyond that we know not what we f will find. Not until we find it, eh? Aye. So let us disperse with the conjecture and set sail for the vault. 
Quest accepted! <laughs> oh! Wow. We had the duty already. Alright. Oh, well. Party. Ration. Dun, dun, dun. We'll just still here. Dancing away. Too far long. Let's say too fast. <sighs> Interesting. I haven't done dun dungeon on a ninja ball boss. Oh, so. Got the chain, so this should be interesting. What do I change?
pom 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 Too late on that.
test of your reflexes. Uh, Okay. Just can't read on everything. I don't think I need most of this, but I think it's below most of what I've got, but I don't know.
Saved that. Got thing. Ooh, what's the final boss? Ah, oh, it's him from the picture. From the pictures, from the uh, teasers. So all I know is that there's a move day does that is. Alright. Changes with the debuff. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit of work getting used to yellow, so we wanna be. I think those greens over there. I don't know why Charlie pulled away so early, but. GG. Give it to the tank. I'll pass on both these since I'm waiting for them.
Hey, I got two play accommodations. That's so nice. <laughs> two people giving the ninja. <laughs> I wonder if um, it was the tank and healer queuing together, maybe. They had to give it to one of the two DPS. What have we here? It is not unlike a Harnish alchemical furnace in design. Well, there is one way we might find out. Stop! You mustn't touch it. Oh. Fritra. Oh, my apologies. Should I continue calling you Varshan? You may address me as you wish. My nature is no longer a secret. Still, this is not a setting I imagined for our reunion. Surely you've not entered these ruins as common looters. Would that we could deny your accusations, but I fear you're not far from the truth. Great Vritra. Might we beseech thee to explain the nature of this strange contrivance? It was crafted by our alchemists at my behest, for the purpose of sealing something away. <laughs> I wasn't going to touch it, but. You know you stole her. But surely, that, what what is it sealing away? Perhaps I should simply show they you. Show you. <laughs> the portal. I have lifted the seal, if only for the moment, by an authority only I possess. A plainer fisher? No, my friend. Small though it may be, this is a functioning gate into the void. The void. Void gates and fissures are much the same thing in practice, in the sense that both allow passage between the source and the 13th. The difference in the terminology refers to the circumstances of their creation. A fissure is an incidental tear in the fabric between the worlds, whereas a void gate is the product of a deliberate action. I suspect this is the latter, judging by the elaborate mechanism put in place to control it. To think that our search for material riches will lead to this priceless discovery. That swirling emptiness, it puts me in mind of old friends, not to mention old foes. Yeah. I must admit, I am deathly curious to know how a void gate came to be hidden in the depths of these ruins.
To tell that tale, we must first peer far to the south, and even further into memory. An age five millennia past, when the Algan Empire sent an invading force to the shores of Merasidia, the southern people rallied around the commanding figures of Bahamut and Tiamat and fought fiercely to repel the would-be conquerors. With Bahamut's defeat, however, the tide turned against them. Desperate to seize any advantage, the Mercidians resorted to summoning primal entities. In response, Emperor Zande forged a covenant with the Cloud of Darkness, sovereign among the all-devouring denizens of the Void. Thus bolstered by icons on one side and Void Scent on the other, the two armies clashed in a battle of unspeakable carnage. So much death, so much loss. I consider myself well versed in that period of history, yet you speak as one who witnessed it happen. Yeah, Indeed, I rude. did. I heard Tiamat's roar of defiance and sped toward that war torn land. Along with my sibling, Ashdaya. We dragons are not male or female, as men are wont to classify, but Elder Sister is the closest a mortal tongue can come to describing what she meant to me. I was the last of our brood to hatch, and Ashdaya cared for me where my sire could not. Thus, I was with her when Tiamat roared. I was with her when she journeyed south, and I was with her when she fought against the void sent hordes. Yet no matter how many of their vile fiends we cast down, more rose from the abyss to take their place. Faced with an unwinnable war of attrition, Ashdaya risked her all on a final gamble. She plunged through the void gate itself to strike at the root of their strength. I tried to follow in her wake, determined to lend what aid I could. But even as I came upon Alag's glittering tower, I saw the rift close behind her. And Ashdaya has been lost to us ever since. I find I must retract my earlier claim of historical knowledge. Nowhere in the Crystal Tower's archives did I see mention of such noble sacrifice. That does not surprise me. To Alagan eyes, it must have seemed as if a lone dragon, driven to madness, simply dove through the gate and did not return. For my part, I spent long years searching for the means to reunite with Ashdaya. Until I could search no more. Until Alag was dust, and the art to open a void gate large enough to accommodate a dragon forever lost. Yet you have the beginnings of a gate right here, under the control of a harnessed device. My discovery came before Radzat Han was founded. Though I scoured the lands for a method to cross the rift, it was beneath the sea that I chanced to find a natural plane of fissure. It was, however, far too narrow to admit a worm's bulk. Only after our city rose upon the rock, and I could enlist the aid of our talented alchemists, did matters take a favorable turn. Hmm. Their dedication was beyond reproach. Tirelessly, they worked to expand the fissure, and after decades of toil, it finally grew to a size that a child might pass through.
Not long ago, you told us that you called out to your kin, that Ashdaya's answer was silence. I suspect the conclusion to your tale is not a joyful one. With hope in my heart, I used the simulacrum to cross the threshold. But no, I did not find her. What I found was a host of void scent clamoring around the opening they had sensed. It was but a moment, but enough. I had no choice but to retreat and allow the portal to contract once more. The gate was a threat to your people. You had to decide between endangering Razatan and abandoning your sister. And you chose the latter. Twas not that thy sibling scorned thy call. Twas that she was trapped beyond a barrier through which neither roar nor dragon may pass. Even now, in the desolate world of the Thirteenth, I can scarce imagine your pain, yet it was wise not to linger in that place. Too long a sojourn, and even a being of your power risks being warped into a creature of the Void. You've seen this phenomenon before, when we stepped into the darkness. I remember when Nero turned purple. I thought that time had come. As did I. Were it not for Une and Doga, or Nero, for that matter, we might never have made it home. Do you remember what happened to Nero? How his wounds allowed the Void's corruption to enter his body and twist his ether? Had it been allowed to progress much longer, I presume he would have been fully transformed. Then there is little hope for Ashdaya. Ah, no. I hadn't meant to. I speak only of... The scales of the first brood are extraordinarily resistant to ethereal fluctuations. They are the protective talisman's core components, after all, and even the corruption I described would struggle to overcome. But she's of been in course. there for like a millennia. With the warding scale in one's possession, one could conceivably survive a stay in the 13th without being warped by its energies. Be that as it may, it is too late to rescue my sister. 5,000 5, years, years too late. Too late. And now countless others look to me for guidance and protection. I'll go. So when I sensed intruders in the ruins, I came only to ensure that the gate remained closed. That, and to secure the treasure, of course. But I want to go. I wish only to forget the rest. I want to go. I wanna go. Fight void scent. We're probably gonna convince them some way or another. <laughs> so they managed not only to expand the fissure, but also manipulate it as one might a gate. Astonishing, is there any chance I could learn more of how this feat was accomplished? I will tell you what I can. First, however, I must return to the High Crucible and arrange to replace the Guardians you so handedly destroyed. It will not do to leave the gate undefended. Ah, <laughs> my apologies. We were perhaps a touch zealous in our rush to uncover the vault secrets. If the constructs can be repaired, we would be happy to offer our assistance. That will not be necessary. 
much as I retain spear vessels for myself, we could duplicate guardians on hand for such eventualities. In any case, we should return to Raz at Han. Oh, cool. So we can just keep coming here, killing stuff then. We will discuss the void gate further, but first I must attend to the matter of the vault sentinels. As your instruments have no no doubt informed you, the Kapli Kuli has been reduced to so much scrap. Please bring a new one out of storage and see that it is conveyed to its post along with a few lesser constructs. Was it boom robbers? Being born from the Tower of Zot? Why the sisters? Do not tell me of blasphemy yet, Rome's free. Uh. Um. <laughs> Everyone's looking away. Oh, I was nervous. Why such guilty faces? Surely it wasn't you who are responsible for this. Oh. Ahem, well, the details aren't important. I shall see it done immediately. And with that, the vault will soon be secure once more. Now, I believe you had questions? Quite a few, in fact. But I'd like to begin with the gate itself. It is still functional, yes? Indeed, which is why I saw it sealed with an alchemy forge lock and warded with my magics. Such power must not fall into the wrong hands. In truth, the primary reason for the vault's construction was to keep the gate hidden from the outside world. So much effort with such a little door. That little door you speak of leads to an abyss teeming with unspeakable horrors. That said, in its current state, it would it would emit only the low, lowliest of void scent, and from this side no man would be able to pass through. No man? I would, th I would think Alphano would fit, given a firm enough push. Physical size is only one consideration. True restriction hinges upon the etheric density of the soul in transit. And yet you succeeded in expanding this dementive portal and sending your simulacrum to the 13th. Thanks to my brilliant alchemist, I should have destroyed I should have destroyed that anomaly when I found it, but instead I bade them devise a means to control it. After much experimentation, they accomplished the impossible. A method was conceived with by which my magics could manipulate the fissure and transform it to a serviceable gate. But the process has long since been forgotten. Once I had given up the search for Azdaja, there was no need to preserve such a stoic and dangerous knowledge. Thus has the gate lain dormant for years uncounted. Our own passage to the 13th was made relatively simple thanks to the Crystal Tower, an ancient mechanism channeling the tunnel's vast stores of energy to open a void gate, one bound to a covenant made by the Cloud of Darkness. Once that sov sovereign entity was beaten back, however, the co covenant was broken, and the doors 
vivid from its connection to the void. Theoretically, it should be possible to reconnect the gate by forging a new pact with another void sent, but such deal deals usually end in betrayal and death. In any case, we should attempt to gain an understanding of the bounty gate. Mayhap you could resume your search for your sister. As I've already explained, I put those futile hopes the rest centuries ago. My place and my duty is here now. Ah, I had meant to ask, what prompted you to search for the vault in the first place? It was all a Stinian's idea. See if the legends were true. Ah, uh, as you have seen. Ugh. The fabulous wealth from the stories are quite real, if not its rumoured origin. But I'm afraid I must assert a assert a prior claim. I've been adding to that trove for years, little by little, but by the time has come to but the time has come to spend it that I might alleviate my people's sufferings. Then we are of one mind. We had no intention of taking it for ourselves. Isn't that right, my friend? Your Excellency, would you object if I were to conduct a closer examination of the gate? I'll make no attempt to open it, of course. I owe you and yours a debt that can never be repaid. Whatever boon you ask of me, you shall have it. You are most gracious, I shall take full advantage of your permission. Would that I could join thee in thy study, but the Lopperets will be anxious to receive my report. I beg my leave of you. And I must be off to Charlene as well. Mistress Cryle was eager to speak with you about that request, so please come back to the Annex as soon as you're able. Farewell well for now. Alright, it was cool. Being with you guys again. I probably should have done the trust system, but I, I didn't want to take too long. We can discuss my findings once I return. You'll be rid of You'll not be rid of me so easily. You may now undertake the Chronicles of a New Hero quest. Myths of the Realm. Oh, cool. Let's start that. Speak with the free space student. Be deciding how best to put these witches to use. Will you lend me your assistance in these liberations? Of course. Thank you, Tiru. You and I are in this together. I'll follow example. Sleep. Meanwhile. Elsewhere. I sensed the breaching of a gate, but it was not the instigated from the on this side. It was thrown open from the other.
I too felt it. A rare occurrence, yes. But, was, but such a tiny por portal is beneath our notice. There are more pressing matters at hand. An opportunity is upon us. The coming of which we have awaited for nigh on 10,000 years. We did not let it slip our grasp. Yet we must not underestimate she who bested the cloud of darkness. Okay, so this, this, I don't think, I don't think this is the uh, uh, 12 then. Even restrained by the, a covenant, the cloud was no feeble wisp who dispersed by some flesh and blood mortal. Bah, let her come. I will drown the world and watch the flesh thing gasps her breaths in her final moments. What is this? Night and black. Your zeal is admirable, but forget not our cause. Think back on our struggles beneath the sun, the sky. Remember why we see not light. Is that? That's hold up. Is that? Yeah, that's that's gold bears. Holy shit! That's a hundred percent gold bears. That's that's an unmistakable design. Holy fucking shit! I thought I thought there was some from bit behind. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, I, I missed that. I, I sort of thought that with like the four elements as well. But holy shit, gold bears? Really? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just kind of speechless that gold bears is in this wonder if the final quest is is named that which is why they're keeping it hush hush and didn't want people speculating all right now we begin we are to spend this treasure wisely, then we must first determine which groups would benefit most from monetary assistance. Though my citizens may find it intimidating to speak with the satrap directly, so I would ask you to act in my stead. You, you, you are to visit Akila and you're to uh, speak with. Right. Matsya and his people listen to the grievances. Esteen, I bet you do the same at Palakas then. I will be conducting my own inquiries at the Gantz Girl. Once you have believed you have asserted the needs of the populace, we can reconvene at Mega Haduta. I will I will be right back.
Sorry about the wait. We're back and ready to continue the story. So we need to go talk to some people about their needs and we just had that re big reveal of gold bears labeled as knight in black that was i was like oh my god what the heck i believe gold bears was there exciting stuff Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, Tiru. I was so glad to see you returned unharmed. You finished the boat with the boat then? Yep. Anything the village desperately needs. Well, I spoke Kalzar's loss. Well, I suppose Kalzar's loss hit us the hardest. I've been trying to find buyers for my fish, but although I sell a few here and there, it's so much more difficult than it was before. Everyone's still struggling to rebuild their lives. But now we're just banding together as best as we can. Hmm. Or someone gently patted me, apparently. Or... I assumed that was from when I was dancing in AFK. Greetings and welcome, traveller. If this is your first visit to Thafnaya, then you must try my special Amra Lassie. Your facing zest cannot be beat. What could such a wonder cost, you wonder? Normally I part with three bottles for a generous price of 19,800 gil, but for you I'm willing to go as low as even 10,000. You'd be practically stealing from me. I am not Estenine. Estinian! God, I did it again. I am not Estinian. Ah, oh, I've been watching way too much Alanino. I'm not Estinian. Still not turning a profit these days. Dealing at that price, you're the only thief around here. Times are harsh, my friend. The world may no longer be on fire. But we are still sifting through the ashes, so to speak. Sisters, spare me. We might as well have the ugly tower back for the scant few travelers we see these days. I myself barely have the coin to buy at local prices, I tell you. If I didn't charge an odd adventure a small fortune for afternoon tea, I'd be scavenging for scraps in the streets. Do I have it? Uh. Die. Alfair's the port. Well, it's in shambles, isn't it? The trade routes are open once more now that the danger has passed, certainly. But no small number of merchants have, have had to sell their ships to make ends meet in the short term. Add to that the sailors we lost in the final days. It's a wonder the flow of exports is no more than a pitiful trickle. If Karl Zar and his constrium were still with us, I'm sure he would have found a way to turn our fortunes around. Now that was a man who got things done. God's rest his soul. You've spoken with key local figures and gained an understanding of the populace's hardships. Okay. Okay. 
Pom pom pom. Bam bam ba bam. Ah, my advisor's return. I've just made it back myself. Why do you retain this vessel now that your true form is known? You could have flown across the island in a fraction of the time. Be that as it may, the sight of a massive creature descending from the sky can be startling to say the least. And there are few places I can enter comfortably without risk of flattering some cart or stool. Hmm, fair enough. As for my inquiries, the people of Palaka's stand were unanimous in their reply. They are surviving. Resources were, resources were stretched to the limit when refugees came pouring in, but they preserved with some assistance from Yidama. Resources... Ah, oh, I read that. From what I understand, they have always been an independent community. Hunters and foragers and the like. And I was assured that the jungle provides for their needs, for the most part. Palaka's stand has weathered the disaster better than most, it seems. I myself heard good news and bad. The quarrymen were cautiously optimistic, having just sold a full wagon of giant skull to a foreign trader. But such visitors are few and far between. Compared to our best years, the weight of the stone leaving Thavnir has been light indeed. Our nation is small and isolated, its prosperity dependent on a steady stream of exports. We must identify any obstacles to the flow of trade, so we may begin working to remove them. Tell me, what did you learn in Akiali and Yidalama? Hmm, I see. About a dedicated buyer, the average fisherman must struggle to offload his daily catch. Which is why I believe we should first address the lack of ships and shortage of able-bodied sailors in Yidalama. I am reminded of a child I spied as I made my way back to the palace. His father lost at sea when the beasts sunk their vessel. So many variations of the same tragic tale, repeated over and over. So many lives lost. Trying the orphans. <laughs> That's the solution. Enough grief to drown in if we let ourselves be overcome. But we will not. Hiru, Estinian. I forced myself to say it right then. I will consider the perspectives you've brought me and devise a plan to help my people confront this adversity. Come, I would like you to be in attendance when I announce the proposal to my assembled functionaries. I thank you for your attendance. The riches the radiant host have retrieved were hoarded in Al Zadar's name. A fortune I set aside for a future day of need. And lo, that day hath come. May it aid our wounded city in reclaiming its vibrancy and vigor. In better times, I would leave such a task to our capable Ahawan. God's rest his soul. Finding myself bereft of his counsel in the here and now, 
I will assume the responsibilities of my office directly. Firstly, the treasure shall be sold for more convenient currency. Thence, invested into the trading port of Yetamar. Our merchants must have their operations restored, their ships rebuilt. Commerce must flow once more. None were spared the tragedy of the final days. Of this, I am well aware. But an absence was created by the loss of Karazal's consortium. And by filling it, we provide new means for our fishermen, our artisans, and others to bring their wares to distant markets. Hmm. And what of the children who were left without family to care for them? That is a concern which weigheth heavily upon my mind. A simple gift of coin will soon be exhausted, leaving these young souls adrift on the fringes of our society. Nay, a proper solution is needed, one which doth guarantee their welfare for years to come. Thou hast surely seen how other nations rise to meet this challenge, adventurer. What dost thou deem the wisest cause? Texas, leaving them trade profits. Investment, it takes a village. I just always funded through. Trade and heavy comfort. Coveted goods. I, I, I'm decided between it takes a village and Idosar's orphanage was funded through trade and highly coveted. I'll go with it takes a village. We must all look out for one another. Let us put this idea into practice. A contract shall be written requiring all who receive of Al Zadar's treasure to commit a portion of their future earnings towards the running of an orphanage. Now, such an influential policy is deserving of a worthy name. <laughs> ah, a fitting candidate. the blasphemy which terrorized Thavnir, but as a hard-working and generous man who brought much wealth mm. to our shores. Do any among you object to this proposition? Many here lost loved ones to the beast. In that time of strife, any one of us could have broken. Any one of us may have been taken by despair. When I think of Kalzal, I feel no hatred. Only a stinging regret that we could not save him as well. Isn't that right, men? This bodes well for that boy. Narad, was it? Perhaps he can cut ties with that shape. 
Then let it be done. Henceforth, this initiative shall be known as the Kalzal Foundation. They still Nefty, got wounds from when he gave his scars. Go out to assemble a patrol and ensure that no child in this city liveth in squalor. Clerks, see to the management of our funds and our citizens must not suffer a day more than is necessary. Dragon and man, side by side in pursuit of a brighter morrow. I'm reminded of this god. Well, that's for all dancers in the head that dancer. Probably a limitation of that theme gear required for that job that they want to use. Putting forth Kalazar's name. Those, those whose lives he enriched will take comfort in seeing his legacy honored. You will forgive me for not speaking sooner, but I bear a message from Archon Yastola. She asks that you meet her at High Crucible at your earliest convenience. Understood, thank you. Yastola must have finished her study of the Void Gate. Shall we hear what she has to say then? I will go with you. I thought the side trap would be too busy setting up the foundation. My clerks have been well, have been the well-oiled cogs of this administration since before our one assumed the office. They understand what needs to be done, and I am curious to learn of the conclusions your icon has reached concerning the gate's unique construction. As you wish, allow me to lead the way, your excellence. Quest accepted. Right, here we all are. You discovered something new. I took a closer look at that device. I was able to determine how it keeps the void gate sealed, but not how it might instead be employed to expand the opening. For that, I would need to reference the technique developed by Vritra's alchemists, no records of which appear to have survived the intervening years. We know this, so why have you sent for us? Have you learned aught of value or not? Patience, good sir. One must introduce the subject before launching into specifics. From what we understand, travel between worlds is accomplished by passing through the nebulous rift which exists between them. Picture, if you will, the moment you were called to the first. Yes. 
You touched a focus of some kind to help the Exarch pinpoint your location. His summoning spell then channeled the energies of the Crystal Tower to begin your journey to his world. Mm -hmm. The magics tore a hole in the wall separating Source and Shard and cast you into the intervening nothingness. In that place, the laws of nature hold no sway. Yet even through this realm of temporal and spatial instability, you were born safely to your destination in the first. The feet that guided you across such an unimaginable distance, both physical and metaphorical, was nothing short of a miracle. Uh huh. Then what of the many voids sent found in the source? Who guides them here, and how? An excellent question. Though there are several methods by which the Void's denizens might intrude upon our world, the rituals of summoning are the most typical. For example, let us consider the Gargoyle, a creature of middling power. such an entity, the prospective summoner must force open a void gate. The portal lasts but a moment and is relatively small, allowing only an imp or other lesser being to squeeze through with their physical body intact. more powerful gargoyle, however, is too large for that. Creating a gate big enough for him would require vast amounts of energy, far beyond the reserves of any one mortal practitioner. Instead, tis far more common to bring over only the entity's soul. We had a taste of that ourselves when a certain exarch dragged us to the first. And just as our bodies remained in our world, the void sense physical form is left behind in the 13th. Hmm. Once at its destination, the summoned soul is granted a temporary shell to inhabit. In the gargoyle's case, a stone effigy has proven a suitable vessel. said that Voidsent must be called here deliberately by someone in the source, reeled in like a fisherman with his catch. Mm -hmm. Exactly. For a being to navigate the chaos of the rift, with or without form, there must needs be a guiding agent on the other side. When the hordes poured forth from Alag's Great Gate, it was the technologists who drew them through. Though to my knowledge, 
Planar fissures are, in essence, natural passages between our world and the Void, which require no such guidance to traverse. Why is only the boundary between the Source and the Thirteenth so fragile? So much so that it often tears open of its own accord. I believe solving that mystery is key to understanding travel between the Source and its reflections. And how do you intend to get your answers? No. The danger is too great. Perhaps. But what some call danger, others think of as adventure. We're going to the void! Were you not listening to my tale? Never mind that the means to expand the gate has been lost to the ages. Even could you force the portal wide enough, you would be greeted by an army of murderous horrors the very instant you step through. I assure you I was most attentive, and I agree that to go alone would be certain death. But if I were to bring along one who has already braved the 13th and humbled the cloud of darkness, well, I imagine my chances would be much improved. Point to the 13. Count me in. Yeah. I had a feeling you might say that. Once again, I put my life in your ever reliable hands. That said, as much as I would like to march straight back to the Void Gate, there is the small matter of being unable to open it without the Sartrap's personal authority. Come on, be a bro. As I've said before, I will grant you and yours any boon you choose to name, provided it does not endanger my people. You have my word that we will take every precaution. Not a single void scent will be allowed to threaten Razatan, assuming we manage to expand the portal in the first place. You have a plan. Actually, I had hoped you might help us with that. I presume the alchemists you retained supplied you with some explanation of their methodology. That they did. House Daymir was overseeing the project. Damien. Damien. Ah, yes. The family associated with the great work. I did not fully comprehend the theory, but their research began with a void scent which had slipped through the fissure. After a thorough examination, they created an Archaean simulacrum possessed of similar qualities. A man-made void scent, mm. if you will. It was apparently indispensable in their efforts to enlarge the gate. A man-made void scent? Weird. Yes. Being great admirers of the Archons, House Daymir submitted detailed notes to Charlene's official committee. They expected praise and accolades for their simulacrum, and were thus devastated to be informed that their work had been classified as prohibited material. If that's true, then those notes might still be stored in a forbidden archive somewhere. Not Google, of course, since that library had yet to be built. Which leaves us with... Graha's favorite place to sneak around. <laughs> Indeed, Numenon's restricted stacks may very well hold a copy. In which case, I say we head directly to Charlian. Looks like we're gonna have to get 
uh, mission from Unless the you anticipate needing help to reach the high shelf. From uh, the use. winds. Go on ahead. Dead. Still need to find Mirage. He owes us big time. Foundation. Let us be on our way as well. Beatrice, very unsure. to venture into the void. Do I sit idly by? Hmm. Beatrice has a lot to, uh, to contemplate. Off we go. Whoosh. <clears throat> Where to enter your encrypted oh, archive for minimum of us, then we must secure permission from the forum. First, however, we shall need to enlist the cooperation of a member to broach the matter on our behalf. Who do you think would be inclined to assist us? No one springs to mind? Hmm, what of Scholar? They've come to Graha's defense during the inquiry after all. This hit us, this hit to the. Hey, the Stolar's account being me. And this is the best way to go. If there was bots to stop and talk the other way. Oh, this isn't where we we're supposed to be going. This is one of the spots. No, the printers do Master Matoya at the age of seven and labored under her tutelage for a full decade. I never had the chance to attend this Thirdian. Neither did Thancred, as I recall. Soon after Master Louis Soir took him in off the streets, he was put in the care of another Archon. His was right, rigorous and practical education in the arts of espionage and survival. I sometimes wonder what life m might have been like had I pursued studies here instead. at the last stand after a day of lectures. Oh, that does sound lovely. Afternoons with friends spent sipping tea and debating theories. Still, I wouldn't wouldn't give up my time with Master Matoya for the world. The dank <laughs> cave I studied in was about as far from the bright, airy halls of academia as one could get, but it was wondrous and magical childhood nonetheless. Oh no, I am still supposed to go here. Where's that in? Then it's but one step forward to tomorrow. Here for another lesson, maybe. Our visitors, and quite esteemed ones at that. What may I do for you? 
Pray forgive the intrusion, Dollar Arch. But we were hoping you might help us secure permission to enter Nurem Watnon's restricted archives. Oh, no furtive forays into the stacks this time, eh? I applaud this newfound sense of propriety. Yet in all of this wide world of comparative serenity, what so compels you to disturb a vault of forbidden wisdom? Fascinating. I had no such, no idea such a technique existed. I would have been surprised if you had. My assumptions is correct. The research left behind by House Damir has lain dormant in Charlene's archives for many centuries. And if you unearth this research, research, what then? Surely you don't intend to cross over into the void. This, that is, in fact, precisely what we intend. To what end, pray tell? To develop a method of transfer, tra traversing the rift for one that I might keep my word to a distant friend. Sentiment aside, I have journeyed to the end of existence. I have heard, felt, and thought oh, it, it, endlessly about the truth of our world and the echo of its future. And yet, I want to understand everything, to unravel it all down to its very last secret. What scholar worthy of the name wouldn't force open a void gate or two if a grand revelation was the promised reward? Ha ha ha, marvellous! An audacious proposal worthy of Master Matoya herself. And after hearing the wise and the where foes. I, for one, do not believe you would use this knowledge for ill. I see no reason not to present your request to the forum's consideration. Although your petition would be better received if you also had the support of another well-placed acquaintance. Why? Master Fortunot, of course. He could hardly he ignore an earnest request from his dear children's most treasured comrade. I was hesitant to approach him directly, but there is no denying that having Master Fortunot on our side would tip the balance in our favour very well. We will pay a visit to Livia Estate and plead our case. Ah, one last thing before you go. I would consider it personal favour if you might share with me the discoveries you make in the void. Hold on.
mic was muted. Sorry about that. <clears throat> My appetite for knowledge is every bit as insatiable as yours, I'd rager. If you could see your way to indulging an old man's curiosity. Of course, Golot. We will be sure to pass on any revelations. Ah, Mistress Teru, Mistress Destola. How may I be of service? We've come to speak with Master Forshanon. Is he home, by any chance? Yes, the Master is in residence. I shall inform him that he has guests. Well, well, Ameliants, would you invite, would invite you inside, inside for tea, but I assume this is not a social visit. You have some sort of important matter to discuss? Then pray proceed, you have my full attention. Well, I suppose I should praise you for following the proto proper protocols this time around. Golomont 
to uh, to express much the same sentiment, I assure you. We're not attempt to circumvent the forum's authority again, unless it was absolutely necessary, of course. Of, <laughs> of course. You understand that the restricted archives are restricted for good reason, yes? If no pressing need exists, then why risk the consequences of employing this forbidden knowledge? For a brother who misses his sister, for a brother who misses his sister, he was his guardian and his friend, a sapless hero who crossed the rift between worlds to save her homeland from horror and suffering. But the brother has given up on thoughts of reun reunion. He spends his efforts elsewhere watching over people yet healing of the flames for the final days, loyal to his duty while betraying the longing in his, in his heart. Tis no vital mission, perhaps, reuniting these siblings, but it feels worthy a uh, cause to pursue all the same. As one who feared losing his own loved ones and spent years in research to prevent it, surely you appreciate how painful such separation might be. Reflections are still very much mystery to us. Offering a share your experience in the first should constitute a fair exchange for our cooperation cooperation. Do not celebrate just yet. The forum must still be convinced. I will add your request to the list of today's deliberations and deliver the decision to you at Balderson's Annex. and Mordona. That's probably the 12 thing. Uh. So what did the forum decide? Put it bluntly, Master Matoya has burned some bridges here in Charlian and salted the earth for good measure. When it came, became clear that his student was the per petitioner in question, well, no few members voiced their discontent. <laughs> then the chamber was reminded in no uncertain terms that I might add of the incredible debt we owe you for and your companions. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's that served to silence the grumblers and stiffen a few spines. And it was agreed to allow you to enter the archives was the least we could do in return. That that is wonderful news. Thank you both for speaking on our behalf. Yes, well, as I am sure you are aware, this permission was not extended lightly. Better knowledge is to be treated with the utmost caution, and there will be repercussions re re if it is not. I wish you well in your endeavor, and bid you good day. <laughs> awesome. Ever the same, that one. Uncompromising? Aye. But that very stoicism is exactly what Charlene needed to guide it through not one but two exoduses. Bum. Yay! That went rather well I think. As a child I dreamed up any number of schemes for getting my hands on those forbidden tomes and now I can simply walk through the door. Our focus will be fighting on finding House de Mare's research notes, of course, but the thought of so much knowledge at my disposal has me a little giddy. Restricted reading. You'll be heading directly to the archives from here, I presume. You presume correctly. Then you'll want to speak with the index page. When you arrive, it's been instructed to grant you access to the restricted section. Excellent. Once again, we thank you for all your help. Oh, it was my pleasure. Believe me. May you find the knowledge you seek. Shall we? Putting way. To think the set of instructions I laughably imagine might actually exist, but yarns away from where you found me napping. If I had known Alazadar Third's exploit sooner. I could well have saved myself the ease of research. Even a children's book might have pointed me in the right direction. To achieve the impossible, one must needs to be flexible mind of mind and look beyond conventional wisdom. A lesson I had already learned, but clearly not taken to heart. Index page. Archon your stola and guests identified. Do you wish to proceed to restricted archives? Follow me if you would. Watch your step and please note that the use of naked flames is discouraged. Damien's notes are to be found anywhere. It will be here. Let us begin. Ugh. 
walking through dusty tomb. tomb. Today, in <laughs> a titled Goldsmith's Journal, today in a world not, today in a world not my own, I met the most beautiful void born creature. It was so unlike her ravenous brethren, eyes blazing not with hunger, but trembling like a candle's flame, threatening to flicker out at any moment. I wonder if she is even the proper word. Such distinctions seem inconsequential, insignificant even. All that matters is the love I feel for this exquisite transcendent being. Though you are, t you are tempted to read more, this does not seem to be the volume you are seeking. Goldsmith? That, that surely isn't about Godbert, is it? And then that would suggest... Um, Hildebrand's mother, I, I don't forget, I, I forget her name at the top of my head, might be a void scent. <laughs> that would, <laughs> it adds up and it'd be funny. <laughs> Primal Disc was the year 1564 of the sixth astral era. Uh, I'm a summoned Ifrit, their patron, patron god. Accounts describe the being as a gigantic, lizard-like being with a potent command of fire aspect magics. If we consider that the primal summoning is an act filled by faith and prayer, it is unsurprising, if not expected, that the resulting deiform entity should manifest the appearance and powers of which it is attributed by its worshippers. What then might emerge from the Aether should one who believes in an almighty omniscience attempt the same ritual? Would the scholar himself grace us with his appearance? Some other embodiment of divine legacy? Could this man-made god truly be all-knowing? And if it were, whence would such knowledge arrive? I myself have many questions concerning the nature of the ancient world, with no spell to transport me back to the days of old. Could I instead summon a being possessed of encyclopedic wisdom of every age, yet with no means to verify its pronouncements? How could one be certain they were true? Ah, Alstomir, the following pages detail an advanced method of manipulating rift-spanning apertures as survived by Nashalon, the ninth patriarch of Alstomir. We present these research notes to the facility of Dalian Stadium as both a token of our friendship and an expression of our boundless admiration. You appear to have located the forbidden tomb volume you seek, your store. Um, have something you'd like to show me, do you? My apologies, I flipped open a single book and was completely absorbed by its contents. Well done, Tiru. I think you may have found our prize. Yes, the ether signature is unmistakable. I've felt the traces of House Damia's resonance many times at the great work. Time to see what all the fuss was about. Oh, there's naked flames there. We'll advise that there's snacky flames all over the place, and we're we'll advised to avoid the, do them. Atmos. 
Among the ranks of the Void Sent, there exist entities with the power to call forth their brethren from beyond. The species known as Atomos, however, is uniquely prodigious in this regard. From its distended maw, it can expel an endless procession of Void-born creatures, a talent which sorely tested the Radiant Host in its battles against these abominations. Surmising that the entity itself was acting as a void gate, we endeavored to capture a small specimen and subsequently examine its physiological structure. Our findings reveal that the Atomos had absorbed a planar fissure into its own flesh, which it could expand at will into a functioning gate. Hmm. Upon further analysis, we identified an ethereal wave pattern emitted during this process. A pattern we were able to emulate by passing crystal-stored ether through a specially designed prism. We proceeded to embed said prism into an arcane simulacrum, thus completing what we have dubbed our artificial atomos. How could I have been so blind to the possibilities? This species, not to mention its ability to summon Void Scent, has been discussed among academics for years now. Just before the advent of the seventh Umbral Calamity, we received reports of Atomos sightings from every corner of Eorzea. Surely you've at least heard the tales. And still, House Damir went and built a mock Atomus of their very own. I'm not surprised the Archons consigned their work to a restricted archive. It was no easy task, but at last we've unearthed the volume we've been searching for. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted to stay longer. See what other forbidden titles might be lurking on these shelves? Ah, but that would be abusing the very special privilege we've been granted now, wouldn't it? Better not. Masters, I would love to start crafting the Atmos. I'm afraid this is far outside my field of expertise. Fortunately, we know a heinous alchemist who would be delighted to be involved to involve herself in our House Demir project. Our business here is concluded for the moment. Please pass on our regards to the forum. Your message will be conveyed conveyed. Should you wish to indulge in more forbidden literature, I will be here. Patreon mode disabled, security mode engaged. <laughs> if anyone can help us, Nidahana can. Uh, I say we return to Thevna and look for her at the great work. Let's go. Dollar tells me you are pursuing a most fascinating study and that you want me to be a part of it? I have no doubt you'll be interested. The research log should speak for itself. Will it now? By the sisters! This is the mark of House Demir. I never knew such a work 
existed. You should. It was sequestered in the Normans restricted archives after all. It was? But that means every word within is forbidden knowledge. A forbidden tomb. Tomb. Filled with forbidden research and you put it right into my unsuspecting hand? I can hardly wait to read it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that belly laugh. I want that, I want that emote. I think that they may have were developing such marvelous techniques so long ago. How many innovations have been lost over the centuries, I wonder. Now that you have glanced over the notes, what say you to helping us build a new mock Atomos? I say yes, a thousand times yes. Work on a Demir project that had been, that had, that had even the redoubtable scholars of Shaolin trembling in their sandals. No alchemist of the great work could resist. You are the woman after my own heart. Oh, I suppose I should ask. What do you mean to do with this big mouth's uh, simulacrum once we've built? Journey to the void. So there's a secret void gate and it's sealed in the ruins at the bottom of the bounty. The day is a day of revelations indeed. If the purpose of our man-made Atomos is to expand this hidden portal, then I will need to see it for myself, I think. Manipulating rift span banning apertures is not the sort of thing you want to attempt without first taking into account every single factor. Then by all means accompany us accompany us to accompany, accompany us to the vault. I plan to lead us back there shortly once we've finished gathering the components I require. Charlian's markets provide the raw acromarine and pure water crystals. But I need to help attaining a small quantity of astral infused water. With such a liquid, you need to go no further than the font of Maya. The aesthetics of old once favored the place for their meditations. The water which pools there is known to enliven the flow of ether. That sounds perfect. If you'll be so kind as to fill a flask at the pool, I will petition Vitra to join us. The idea. I have in mind won't amount to much without his authority to command the void gate. Shall we be about it then? We meet back here anon. You have that class for me? Here you go. Yes, this should suffice. suffice. Thank you, Tiru. Oh. Um. I actually know which of those I want more. Or less. Void theory. Ooh. The title of that might be. This might be the last quest because they talked about how the last one they're keeping hidden because they didn't want people theorizing void theory get it get it theorizing 
look who who I came across. Estinian. Oh, I didn't even know Estinian was there. Estinian seemed in need of a diversion, and we, in turn, may have need of his lance. Right, Nat, then. Now that our little party is assembled, let us make our way to the ruins. Will we have need of Nightseer's boat again? Not this time. Once Stola informed me of our destination, I arranged a vessel to be ma made ready at Akiali. Your Excellency is ever the greatest host, shall we? Dun dun dun! I'll fly to there. ship is yours to command. Our oh, thanks. We set sail at once. Oh, this is so exciting. Allah's Dar's legacy to see the truth of a legend with my own eyes. All aboard the treasure vault. Um. ruins alone were impressive enough but i never dreamed such a treasure lay hidden in the depths of the bounty it may have been helpful to know this device existed your excellency my apologies the gate was a secret i shared with none but my closest advisors I feared for what might happen should those with ill intentions learn of its existence. Hmm. What is it you're doing now? There is something I wish to verify. The NOAA reports claim that a short stint into the void carries little risk of etheric imbalance. Should one suffer an injury, however, or if one's expedition drags on longer than intended, that risk becomes significantly greater. Graha theorized that a warding scale would confer protection from the void's corrupting influence, but I would prefer to test that hypothesis before we set foot in the 13th ourselves. So... This is an experiment of sorts. Yes, an experiment. Tell me, how would you go about testing the efficacy of the warding scale? Oh, oh. Oh. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Surely you'd not expect me to wriggle through that tiny portal. We needn't attempt anything so drastic. A small familiar should serve well enough. Okay. Now, a lowly imp can navigate a fissure, no matter how narrow which means an arcane entity of similar stature should be able to manage the same. I hadn't wanted it to come to this, but no other familiars will do, I'm afraid. Hmm, what is she gonna summon? I dislike the sound of that. What manner of fiend does she mean to summon? Ocean rise and cloud bank form, from mountain spring and rainfall storm, from river flow and life be born. 
That voice. Ready your arms. I fear she's been possessed. <laughs> oh, come now. That was adorable. Though not my first choice, these familiars I conceived of as a child have the best chance of fitting through the gate. <laughs> I only wish my younger self had considered a more dignified ending to the creation ritual. <laughs> In any case, these two should serve Since she as well. created it, surely she can change it? This one will bear a warding scale. And when they return from the 13th, we can observe how the talisman, or absence thereof, has affected the progress of the Void's corruption. If I could impose upon you to open the gate, your excellence... Ah, yes, of course. We should also be wary of Void Scent slipping through while we conduct our experiment. Estinian, you are to keep Nidana safe from harm. As you say. You had best be on your guard as well. Broth and foam. <laughs> oh, are you volunteering to join the Nixies? I could shrink you down, you know. <laughs> Let us begin, shall we? Ugh. I don't normally go for the joke ones, but I kind of had to then. Nixies, into the void. Look, look. Waiting. Ooh. She's so giddy with excitement of what now they come back. I think we've waited long enough. Nixies, return to my side. Yeah, one's clearly okay and one's clearly not okay. You little one, you did well. Oh, the poor thing, its essence has been irrevocably warped. Out of 
time. I must reseal the void gate. That was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. And what of our experiment? I'd say the results speak for themselves. The unprotected Nixie has suffered extensive etheric corruption. As Nidana observed, it's well on its way to becoming a void scent. The one merged with the talisman, however, appears unaffected. I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Rest now, little ones. Graha's theory was correct, then. So it would seem that while our second familiar was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. It was, of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. We may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the Void's instability, but my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. Ugh. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste, and made of that world a useless void. You remember Una Kalhai, the unusual child we met during our troubles with the Warring Triad. He explained the fate of the 13th thus. The champions of that ill-fated world use the stone known as Aurasite to contain the power of primals. But those self-same heroes were gradually corrupted by the Aurasite's bleeding energies, transforming into fiends with an endless hunger for ether. By the time anyone thought to oppose them, Light's strength had grown too feeble, and the balance of the 13th tipped into eternal darkness. Mm. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? It's just a big void. Darkness everywhere. I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. A void in every sense of the word. Hmm. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Vritra. Our journey into the 13th is but the first leg of a longer voyage. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new mysteries and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. Yay, you're still with us all the way. But first I must focus on refining the warding talisman. 
Then I can begin work on constructing an artificial Atomos. This is all sounds or like stuff that'll take if time. I had the relevant manuals to hand. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sartrap's family archives? <clears throat> Your Excellency? Hmm? Oh, yes. That can be arranged. I will speak to my officials upon our return. We will see you back in the city then. Beecher is still very unsure about all this, and with good reason. Beat. I guess that wasn't the final. Star Traps duty. <clears throat> Once Nadana's succeeds in replicating the mock Atomos, this door into the 13th will be ours to open. Will you be crossing the threshold alongside us? I realize this is more my endeavor than yours. Hmm, to be honest, I've no interest in visiting the void myself. Might we discuss this later? There's something I must do first. Why does everyone insist on being so secretive? I at least had good reason for not ex explain for wanting to explain my Nexi ritual. Ahem. Shall we proceed with our other preparations then? As we saw. The warding scale can be effective at protecting the bearer from other sources of etheric corruption. Nevertheless, the talisman's durability need to be improved if it is to withstand the void's influence for a prolonged length of time. I think that is a problem we can address without involving the brilliant but busy alchemists who created it. Who do we know who excels at this kind of structural augmentation? Galond Iron Works. An excellent suggestion. As I recall, Sid himself is no stranger to the void and its volatile energies. With his experience at, ha at the helm, I have every confidence that Iron Works can strengthen the Warden scale. Yay! Come, let us visit the operations in Raugas Reach and commission their best and brightest. Yay! We can this. <laughs> Bring you to the ironworks. We have a commission for you and your president, actually, assuming he's available. Master said, certainly, I'll see if he has a moment free. Please, as always, I hear you have a job for us. Of the talking animation. Heading into the void to find a lost dragon? That sounds almost pedestrian compared to your last adventure. Honestly, I don't know if you could say anything that would surprise me after Meteon and that bloody mess. Alright, let's take a look at this talisman of yours. You said there were signs of deg degradation. degradation. Hmm. It seems some manner of corrosion has set in around 
a scratch on its surface. Much as the void's corruption seeped into Nero through his wounds, in which case our best bet may be to simply prevent the scale from being damaged in the first place. And how might we achieve that? We have a coding agent for strengthening trinkets and the like, but I'd, I'd be wary of applying any compound which might upset the scale's delicate alchemical balance. Far safer to dress it in, its, in armor. We'll construct a protective casing, one utilizing metal alloys and high etheric conductivity, though not to impede the talisman's primary function. Suit of armor, as you see. Nero has compiled data on the 13th, so I'll have him I'll have him pitch in with the design just to be sure. If only it weren't such an ordeal to convince him to follow our safety protocols. I swear I've never had such a reckless employee. In any case, we may need some time to untangle the particulars. Understandable. We know how busy your schedule is, and the final result will doubt doubtlessly be worth the wait. Ha! The hard part will be ducking Jesse and her constant barrage of demands while we sneak about doing the fun stuff. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I think we can leave the rest in Sid's capable hands. Let's return to the great work and see how Nadan is getting on with the mock Atomos. Ugh. Boy, it's been a long stream. I'm so far in. Yeah, I kind of don't want to stop. Ah, hey, Stola. The adjustments are going well, I hope. It is a lengthy process, but the end is in sight, yes. That's wonderful news. I myself had some good fortune searching through the Sartrap's private records. What I found was a transaction log dated around the same period as when Alzadal's legacy was built. It included a purchase list of highly exclusive alchemical components. And I knew I'd discovered the key to making the artificial Atomos. I then visited the High Crucible to commission the materials. After I'd explained my requirements, I was beset by volunteers insisting I allow them to help with the entire project. The usual reaction to someone forcing open a void gate is to run for the hills. Tarnish academics certainly are a different breed. The alchemists of old were cut from a similar cloth. The unknown held no fear for them. Indeed, they were ever eager to seek new knowledge, regardless of the danger. And were you not also fearless, heedless even, in your determination? My sire entered his dormancy before I was hatched. And so it was Ashdaya who kept my ex safe and warm. It created a bond between us. Even long after I learned to fend for myself, I rarely strayed from her side. She was my guardian, my sister, my dear companion, and not a single day passes that I do not mourn her absence. No matter how deep the darkness, 
I would not surrender my search. I promised myself the time would come when we would once more take to the skies together. But I am set up now. The Radiant Host is here to serve, Your Excellency. Nabdeen, what is this about? Sir Estinian told us of your predicament. For centuries you have protected Rads at Han, never showing your true self. Hiding behind a curtain and living only in service to the people. Your dedication meant more to us than your deceit, and so did we accept you as our rightful ruler. After all that you have sacrificed for this nation, did you imagine we would begrudge you your heart's desire? We survived the final days! We are a strong and proud people. We, the Radiant Host, will keep Thavnir safe in your absence. I am grateful for your loyalty and for your encouragement. And yet... Now you listen to me, Varshan! You are wearing that face, after all. As I have told you before, you are a little brother to us all. And if you are family, then so too is your sister. We are there for you if you need us. But do not ask us to sit by and watch while you abandon a sibling you have ached to rescue for millennia. succeed in opening the way. It is only a matter of time. All you need do is prepare to step through to the other side. Your Excellency, I wanted to thank you for building the orphanage. It means so much that my sister and I will have a place to be together, safe and happy. And I hope that you and your sister can be together again, too. Take heart, and protect them well. Such were the words I once said to you, and here I stand, failing to live up to them. If my heart is torn, I am fit to protect neither Ajdaya nor Radzadhan. My people, I have come to a decision. Bashan will depart Thavnir for a time. My dragon self will remain in the palace, but only to conduct the satrap's most essential duties. While I am focused on controlling this vessel, there may be matters that escape my attention. I rely on you, my trusted friends, to watch over one another until I return. Take care and fair fortune, little brother. Many tears would be shed should you come to harm. Uh. I would not dare make you cry. 
So lovely. Good moment. You surprised me. Yes. For a lone wolf, you have sown such an unusual degree of, shall we say, involvement in helping Veecher reach his conclusion. It was for the greater good that the worm's thundering sighs were keeping his citizens awake at night, and had travelers believe in the palace wrecked by some unnatural storm. What of your own answer then? You seem disinclined to venture into the void. When I was with Nidhogg, his vengeful thoughts were my thoughts, his endless rage my rage. The soul-chilling grief he nursed for Rathdrock's death. I would not wish such agony upon a foe, let alone a friend and ally. If there is a chance we can spare Vecher that pain, then I will follow you. An unusual crew, crew we have here. Indeed, but perfect for the, our purpose. I should think I'd rather not bother the Scions with what less than a dire threat to the star. Now, onto specifics. Unlike the first, where the flood of light was halted before its devastation was complete, the 13th has been utterly subsumed by darkness. My plan as such is to explore the void in stages, withdrawing to safety after each brief foray. It would be more convenient had we some manner of base camp near the gate itself. One place palace chambers should one of the palace chambers should serve. Come, let us reconvene outside the data. <clears throat> And so we will require suitable accommodations. Might we make something available for our guests? All the chambers are present, presently hosting a great, the great mounds of treasure we carried out of the vault. Once the foundation activities begin in earnest, however, we can redistribute the grove and make room, make a room or two ready for habitation. Good. Please inform me when you've completed the arrangements. As you heard, we will have you settled. As ever, you are most gracious, Your Excellency. You risk yourselves to aid me in my search for as Dajar. Providing, providing comfortable quarters is the least I can do. I only wish we knew more about our destination. The gods only know how long our explorations might possibly take, and or, or what our chances of success might possibly be. Succeed or fail, I am grateful for you for convincing me to make the attempt. <sighs> On that note, I will turn to the great work and lend what help I can to Nidhana. If your preparations to make air we venture into the 13th, now is time. All I need is my armor and my lance. Perhaps I'll train with the Radiant Host to pass the time before we depart. This is sounding like it's the end. But who knows? I've thought that a couple of times already. You know what this means to me, Tiru. But my purpose need not consume you as well. 
We are headed to another world. Find what joy you can in experience, in experience. For you are the traveler, an adventure at heart. I this I know. Uh, a lot of each. Oh, good, let's take that. Quest complete. Ooh. Meanwhile, in the 13th, well, we go bears. Is that really? It's a, it's a, it really is. I saw the blonde here. Like, it doesn't quite look the same. That past some walked adventure spur, pulses quicken, quicken spirits, spirit stir. To be continued. Oh boy! Question is, do we do... Do we call it there for the night? Or do we... Go do the Alliance Raid stuff? Do we save that for tomorrow? I think we save that for tomorrow. Because it's been, it's been long. Um, yeah, so I think we'll call it there for the night. So, uh, again, like usual, thank, thank you guys that tune in. This, this has been great. I've, I've been enjoying this newfound adventure. I got through that so far. <laughs> it took one day though. I want more. The gold bears and the potential avatars, reapers, you know, I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure that is, um, which I've got mixed feelings about. Um, very mixed feelings about them bringing him back. Uh, if that is really him, as I suspect. Uh, but I am super excited about the reveal of Goldbears. Oh my god. I was not expecting that. Uh, everything I was not suspecting Goldbears. That, that's amazing. Um, so yeah uh so again thank you for watching and those who watch seen this on the archive hope you've enjoyed watching me play through this i'm real excited for <laughs> the next patch which is gonna be forever away but we've still got more stuff to look forward to such as uh that's the alliance raid the new alliance raid story which i'll I'll be doing tomorrow night and then uh and then I've got to probably going big into PvP and then in the near fu near future patches we've got the new Hildebrand stuff. Oh boy. Super excited for that. So again, thanks for watching and uh until next time. Bye bye. <laughs>